Hey there. In this video, we're going to continue our look at minerals, uh, specifically how to use the minerals chart. So let's get started. Our goal of this video is to understand exactly how to read the properties of common minerals earth science reference table. Now, the reference tables, if you don't know, is a collection of uh, earth science related charts and graphs uh, that's used in New York State in the high school system. Uh, and it's free to download. You can actually grab a copy of this particular chart at science.mikesamartano.com backslash minerals. So let's dive in. We'll begin by looking at the chart itself. So here it is. Uh, it's essentially a table that shows 21 of the most common minerals on Earth and some of their physical characteristics and other interesting information. So we're just going to kind of take a quick run through the chart, and then we'll do an example of how we can use this to identify a particular sample. So let's jump in. First thing, all the way on the right hand side, we see a column that says mineral name. And of course, that's pretty self explanatory. These are the names of the 21 minerals that are included. This is certainly not all of the minerals on Earth, but they are some of the more common ones. So you'll find the name of them there. Um, all the way on the left side, we see luster. Now, if you don't know a lot about minerals, you might want to go back and check out some of my previous videos because I go through all of these different things, um, including what all of these words mean. Um, but I'll give you a quick recap now. Luster is the way in which light reflects off the surface of a mineral. And while there are a variety of types of luster, the two main ones are metallic, which would be minerals that basically appear like a chunk of metal, gold or silver, uh, and then non-metallic. And so you can see that here. Working our way across, we next have hardness. Hardness is a number from 1 to 10 that's based on something called the Mohs scale of hardness. 1 would be very soft minerals like talc, and 10 would be very hard like diamond. So you can see there's a little bit of a, either a number or a range of numbers for each of the minerals. Next is uh, what we call breakage, which would be either cleavage, which would be minerals that break in a predictable way, or fracture, which are minerals that break randomly. Uh, so that's something you can usually but not always tell by looking at the actual sample or perhaps breaking it to see if it breaks apart predictably, displaying cleavage, or randomly and irregularly, which would be fracture. Next is colors. So this would be the actual color that the mineral commonly appears. But please keep in mind that most minerals exist in a variety of colors. And of course, a lot of minerals come in the same color as each other. So um, while that can be helpful, it's not great on its own. You have to use multiple characteristics to identify something. Moving along. Distinguishing characteristics. Uh, so this is where you'll find all sorts of other interesting information that sets uh, a particular mineral apart from the others. Uh, here's where you'll find information about streak, which is the color of the mineral as a powder. So you can see graphite has a black streak, uh, hematite has a red-brown streak, etc. You'll also see other interesting things like galena has a very high density, magnetite is magnetic, uh, selenite gypsum can be scratched by your fingernail, etc. Um, one of the more interesting ones, halite, has a salty taste, um, etc. So moving across, we, we then have uses. This is what the minerals are commonly used for. So pyrite is used as an ore of sulfur. Uh, muscovite mica is used in paint and roofing, etc. Uh, that's interesting information, but not really great for identifying samples. Um, but interesting nonetheless. Similarly, we have composition, and that tells you the elements that make up the mineral. So it's also interesting and good to know, but not necessarily super useful. Um, by the way, if you don't know any of these abbreviations, for example, graphite is made of the element C, which stands for carbon. Down on the very bottom of the page is a key that tells you what the abbreviations mean. So that's the chart, pretty straightforward. Uh, what I want to do is actually try and identify a sample, show you how you would go through the process. So let's bring in a mineral sample, and uh, let's jump right in. So the first thing I like to look at is luster, because uh, it's generally very obvious. You don't have to test anything. You basically just look at the sample. Um, and you're, you're asking yourself, does this look like metal or not? Is it metallic or non-metallic? And clearly, this sample has a metallic luster. It's got this shiny, kind of sparkly silver appearance. So right off the bat, I can eliminate the entire bottom of the chart by looking at the luster. 
Um, so now I'm down to five minerals just with one simple characteristic. So the next thing I want to look at is how it breaks. Now, this is a little tricky, but if you look at it, this sample was not cut this way. It naturally breaks into almost like a cubic kind of shape with lots of right angles. Uh, it appears in places like it, it was actually cut by a blade, but it's not. And if you were to hit this with a hammer, you would see that all of the small pieces that result have a similar shape. So that's what we call cleavage, breaking in a predictable way. So with that, I can eliminate these bottom three, and I'm down to two possibilities. So now I'm going to look at some other factors. So let's consider hardness. Now, hardness, I would typically test a mineral by trying to scratch something else that I know, like perhaps scratching a piece of glass, which has a hardness of 5.5, or a copper penny, which is 3, or, or any number of things. The problem here is that the two remaining possibilities, graphite and galena, their hardnesses are pretty similar. Graphite 1 to 2 and galena is 2.5. So I don't know that any of those tests would be super conclusive for me. So I'm going to ignore hardness for now. Let's jump over to distinguishing characteristics. Uh, so this may prove to be helpful. So graphite has a black streak. Galena has a gray black streak. Um, slightly different, but again, probably pretty tricky to actually tell in reality. Um, graphite has a greasy feel, so I could actually feel this sample to figure out if it has a greasy feel or not. Galena has a density of 7.6, which is pretty high, so I would expect it to feel very heavy if it were galena. Uh, so those are things I can definitely consider. Uh, as for uses, I can see what they're both used up for, and that's interesting, uh, but not terribly helpful, nor is what elements they're made of. Um, so I'm actually going to jump back to color here. Now, Again, color is not a great characteristic to use because there's so much variety in the mineral world. But in this case, um, graphite is silver to gray. And then galena, they make a point of saying it's metallic silver. Um, and that's certainly how I would describe this sample. So I can, based on that, I can go ahead and conclude that this sample is, in fact, galena. Uh, now, again, it's not a perfect system, but if you're careful and you use as much information as you can and you eliminate things on the chart, you can usually get to a pretty good identification. So that's how you use the chart. Uh, don't forget to head over to the website to download your copy if you want to take a look. Thanks so much for watching, and uh, don't forget to subscribe on YouTube at Mike Samartano. Have a good one.